Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to take you through the signal path on this Class D amplifier. It's from Efficient Power Conversion EPC. I've actually got a series of these videos and I've got them in a playlist. I'll link them down below. And I've looked at all kinds of different things, performance, THD, you know, the phase gain, the Bode plot, that kind of stuff. And uh, the last video was about the output stage. It's a bridged output stage and it's using GAN FETs. So that's what's really cool about this is not only is it Class D, but it's kind of the new future of uh, Class D amplifiers. It's using GAN FETs. So it's in the mid 90s as, as far as efficiency, like 96% efficient. That means it's 150 watt rated into eight ohms. So you're only burning about six watts in this amplifier, the whole thing. That's not very much power doesn't even need a heat sink doesn't need a fan so pretty awesome now what I want to do is today what I want to do is just follow the signal path from input to output so you can kind of see what each stage is doing okay now here let me show you a, a quick diagram simplified diagram I'll show you the schematic too and as we go along what you'll see on the board me probing and you'll see the uh, signal on the oscilloscope okay now what's kind of cool about this design it is actually designed with a bunch of operational amplifiers with some class D amp uh, FETs on the output the nice thing about that is it kind of makes it easier to visualize what each stage is doing you know some of these stages are just for isolation to isolate one stage from another stage for instance like a buffer okay this is a buffer amp signal comes in plus goes out same signal in, same signal out why you use something like that is because the impedance on this stage uh, sees a high impedance. So this buffer, it's kind of like using multimeter your scope when you're probing something. It doesn't affect this circuit. It doesn't weigh it down. It doesn't change any of the impedances here. High impedance here. But yet on the outputs, low impedance. It has some transistors inside here that can drive a signal. So it can look at this and say, okay, you want me to pass that signal on? No problem. I can pass that on along with some umph, you know, so it can pass that to the next stage, okay? Some of these amplifiers, not only are they providing some isolation like that, because each amplifier kind of does that on its own. And it not only does that, but it provides a function like gain or something like that, okay? So let's just look at it. The input has a capacitor. That says, uh, you know, to block off the DC, only let the AC signal through, so that way you don't have to worry about uh, DC current coming out to your speaker, okay? So the input stage starts off there. The output stage ends up at a bridge uh, stage where these this is a driver here. It's driving two GAN FETs. The output of those two FETs come over to these two, and you put your speaker between those. So that's why it's a bridge, okay? I didn't show that here. I ran out of board space and I didn't want to make this too, too small. But I showed that in the last video. We'll be looking at the output signal on the scope. And that way, as we follow the other, you know, using another probe, we'll follow the signal through. And you can compare that signal to what we see on the scope. So that way, we use this as a reference. Okay. Now, I've shown the plus and minus, the polarities on these amplifiers to kind of make a point here. What happens on this bridge is the signal comes in and then gets split. And this is inverted from this. One's, one's inverted from the other. So that way this guy is driving up and this guy's driving down. That's how you get that bridge effect. You know, you, you get that dual voltage because this guy's swinging up and this guy's swinging down at the same time. Okay? So let's see how that happens. As the signal comes in, you go through this. It goes through a capacitor, basically a buffer to drive it into this gain stage where this is the volume control and so you got a minus and a minus two minuses make a, a positive you're back to positive because you know you go 180 another 180 you're back to 360 so you're back here and then you go through a plus so you're still plus okay and then you go through a minus goes to the minus sign but then this block right here is what is, uh, I call the zero detect is what it's called this creates a square wave that modulates the audio signal okay got a video showing that <laughs> 
And then we have a feedback stage. A feedback from this stage comes here, and this feedback comes here. So you got each one of these halves of the circuit has its own feedback. And it and it's an amplifier, so it's like a buffer. It doesn't change what's going on here to what it's putting out over here. It's detecting the signal, sending it over here. And you notice it goes at a minus terminal. That's because it's you know negative feedback. So it comes back and it gets basically summed with this guy and goes into this negative input. So you have two negatives, make a positive. This goes into positive, so it's still positive. Then you go negative, negative, so you're back to positive. So whatever the face here is, is we're gonna see it get flipped around a bit and then over here it'll be positive and then look we have a capacitor the capacitor to this drive network that drives these GAN FETs is again DC coupled so this whole network because it's operating on plus or minus voltage uh, it's going to drive its own reference point separate from this ground the, this return point here is is what comes from the input so we have this return all the way up to here, but then we have to go to a split power supply, a plus and minus, so we can get this bridge operation going. And to do that, we use capacitors, strip away the, the DC portion, and all you get is AC, and over here we develop a new reference point, and then we use these drivers to swing up and down from that, okay? So we're gonna follow that signal through and you'll see that happen. And from here, after we go minus, minus, and it's back to plus, okay, then it comes through a minus, minus, so it's back to plus. Oh, but then it goes into the minus of the zero detect, so it's negative. So that's how this one's inverted from this one. Again, negative feedback. All right, so there we go. So let's come over here, and we're going to look at the board, start probing things, look at the scope, and see what that signal looks like. And I'll show you the schematic along the way, okay? But that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to put a signal in here from the function generator. I got a, I, I think I'll put a 1 kilohertz sine wave in. And we'll adjust the volume. Uh, I'll adjust the volume up and down at different portions so you can see how the volume is affecting things. All right? All right, let's do it. Okay, guys, so here's the uh, schematic of one of the channels. Here's the XLR input or the RCA, and we're gonna just use the RCA, the single ended input up here. So we'll come in here, there's our capacitor right there, and then we come through this differential amplifier, so see, like say there's actually some resistors and stuff, but uh, we come out of that into this uh, buffer stage. Well, so we come out of that and we come into this gain stage, okay? There's our volume right there, okay? And then here's our buffer and then we come into this gain stage and here's our zero detect and then we go through this other capacitor right here where this sets up our driver or output stage okay so this sets up the bias for our new reference and then here's the high side and the low side of the finally the two GAN FETs out here to get switched on and off and this is the driver chip so this is the driver stage, and this is a part we really haven't looked at too much, but we're gonna come all the way through and we'll be looking at this output stage. But here is a breakoff point. So after you come through the volume, then we kind of come into a Y configuration where uh, we get the bottom two FETs of our bridge getting driven by this circuit and the top one here. And you can see our feedback coming here, the feedback on this one coming up here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just tr trace the signal right through here. We're going to see the signal here, and we'll see it in this gain stage. And once we go through the gain stage, we can adjust the volume and see it go up and down. All right, so we're going to start going through here. Now, on the, on the, uh, some of the circuits on the bottom side of the board, and so we'll kind of have to flip the board over as we need to to come through the signal, okay? All right, to start with, we're going to monitor, we're gonna put our signal in here, the input, we're just gonna monitor the input and look at the output signal and I'll adjust the pot so you can see uh, input to output. All right, just a quick setup. The input signal right here is coming into our RCA jack and the ground I just have it on the board right here, okay? 
here's our volume control right here so that's our input stuff and the volume control here's our scope I'm going to have it grounded to another ground terminal here and be probing with this scope probe and we're going to start looking at the input signal right here now the input power the split power supply comes in here the output of this channel comes off of here off a bridge there's another bridge for this channel uh, entirely additional circuit on this side that's identical to the one I just showed you and here's our mix it current probe cool little guy I just reviewed and this is a little amplifier module for it and here's the mix sig differential thought I should use them both right and the mix sig differential probes were coming in on these two leads looking at the output so we're going to look at the current and the voltage on the output and we'll use that as a reference to compare as we follow through the circuit. Oh, and not to, mention, not to forget to mention our 8 ohm load sitting over here. And you can't see the little white leads underneath everything else coming up to the terminals. But that's our 8 ohm uh, 200 watt load. Which we'll probably be putting about 75 watts into about half the power that's rated for 8 ohm. Because as you, you'll see, even at 75 watts, the 200 watt resistor gets too hot for me to touch in just very short time. Okay, the scope is set up. The yellow trace channel one is our input signal and it's about 0.715 millivolts RMS. And then our output current will be here and our output voltage will be here. So I'm gonna start increasing the volume. And so you can see the green and purple waveform. They're kind of on top of each other. Maybe you can see that. I'll separate them here. And you know what, I'll just separate one of them slightly from center, just to offset it a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the scale. Okay? So that way you can see them both. All three waveforms are in phase. That's at 1 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz, 20 volts RMS output, and 2.5 amps RMS output. Okay, so that's input to output. So now let's go to the next signal and line in the signal chain. All right, guys, so this is our signal. This is uh, the input, the XLR jack and the RCA jack. Okay, so we're coming in through there, and we just got through monitoring there. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the other side of this capacitor, okay? Now, we're going to look right here between the capacitor and the resistor. If we look at pin 2, uh, this ground reference here is going to be ground at pin 3 and this amplifier is going to force pin 2 to be the same value, which it will look like 0 volts. It will be virtually ground. But in doing so, it's going to create a voltage on this side. So we'll come over here, then we'll jump over here to pin 1 of this amp and see what that looks like. And it'll be the same thing over here. When we go to uh, the other side of this resistor, pin 3 is at ground. So this is going to, amplifier is going to drive pin 2 to be ground, a virtual ground, to be the same value as pin 3. So we'll see uh, what it looks like over here. And then we'll adjust that gain to see how that changes. And we'll go through an inversion on this guy, and the output of here. And we're going to go through another inversion here. We, we compare it to the output we'll see inverted here and over here going minus minus it should be back in phase right here and then we have this button and we'll go on the other side of the board and look at those two things okay let's go do that all right guys see the yellow line there that is our uh, probe that we're going to look at I'm going to go the other side of the capacitor this is U3 right here and this is R3 this is the resistor the, uh, is coming off the capacitor. The capacitor is sitting right over here and the signal comes up and goes to this guy right here. And here we go. Okay, so we don't have any DC offset so it looks exactly the same as it did before. Uh, it's just going through capacitors. A big enough capacitor at 1 kilohertz it doesn't affect it at all. And it's still in phase, right? Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side of that resistor so it's on the input pin of that operational amplifier and watch what happens. The input signal looks like it's zero, but the amplifier is forcing 
that to zero. So then we go to pin one. Okay, now I'm on pin one. So that's the output of that amplifier that's feeding back negative, imp uh, negative feedback, forcing that pin down. But look at that, it's inverse. So now our signal's been flipped over. It's 180 degrees out of phase with the output signals, the green and purple. So that's the pin one going into the resistor the next op amp. If I go to the other side of that resistor, it goes back to zero again because the next amplifier is driving that feedback to force it to be equal to the other pin, which is reference to ground. But now we'll look at the output of that amplifier, which is also pin one of the next chip. All right, so carefully probing pin one, and there's pin one. Now look at that, we're back uh, at the output of the next amplifier and we're back in phase again. Now this stage is the gain stage. So now I'm gonna adjust the pot so you can watch the input voltage change this time. See the input, the yellow one changing? Now we can affect it because we're going through the potentiometer. Whoa, I'm trying not to short my circuit here. So, yep, you can see the yellow signal going up, driving our output stage up. So that's what that stage does. All right, guys, the next stage is that buffer amp on the top side of the card. So we're back on the top side. Pin five is the input of that buffer. And let me see if I can carefully touch that. Okay, there we go. In phase, because that's the signal we just got. That was the same signal as pin one of the uh, output of that gain stage. It's just pin five of this chip. Now I'll go to pin seven, which is the output. And it's a positive pin, it's just going through the buffer, so, okay, so there it is, there's the output, it's just a buffer, so you shouldn't see any difference. All right, guys, so the next stage is where the buffer feeds, uh, feeds into the next stage along with the feedback. So, on one side of the resistor, we just saw that and then on the other side of the resistor it actually goes in to the input of the next stage which is going to just look like ground again all right guys uh, so the next stage we went into is where the feedback and that buff ramp feeds the next op amp which uh, is a filter plus it's the summing stage of the feedback and the input signal look it looks like zero Again, that's because the other pin is tied to zero, so that output is uh, forcing this pin to look like ground, so virtually ground. So the output of that one will be very interesting because it'll combine the two signals and amplify them. All right, guys, look at that. That's an interesting signal. It went through, and it's got the feedback coming in. Here, let me turn up the... Look at that. That's how we're modulating our gain signal with our with that feedback because it's now we're getting square wave. Okay? So here let me freeze that and I'll zoom in on it. Okay, so this is where the uh, class D stuff is starting to happen. It looks really noisy, right? But it's really just the class D stuff modulating with our one kilohertz sine wave. So let's hit our zoom. And then look at that. So it, it's a sinusoidal wave, uh, high frequency wave, that's riding on top of our one kilohertz. See our signal up here? These two little green bars, what's inside them is what's on the screen. So let me spread that out a little bit. See the, the green bar, the window? So now I've got a couple of cycles in there. But look at this. So now what we're going to do is zoom back in here. Now, this is what gets fed into the zero detect circuit. So, as it crosses zero, if it's, okay, let me back up. If this is, if when this little yellow snake thing is right in the center of zero, then equal amounts of the signal will be above the, the zero line, and equal parts will be below. So, the pulse width will be 50%. When this goes down below, only a small portion of the peak is above the zero, so you get a narrow wave, a narrow pulse, and when it goes up like this, 
a big portion of the waveform will be above the zero so you get a wide duty cycle. So let's zoom in on that again. All right, so see that waveform? And we're right here, kind of in the, uh, right in the middle. I have to scan, scan over. See the screen line right here? So, okay, so now I'm towards the top of this a crest of one of these uh, pulses. And see how the zero line is right across here? And that that pulsing waveform is almost entirely above the zero. Not quite, but almost. So that means the part that dips below makes a very narrow pulse. And so you get a wide pulse above it. Okay? And then if we go to a negative swell. Okay, now I'm on a negative. Now see the waveform is almost entirely below uh, the zero, that, which that purple is actually showing us for zeros, so that's kind of nice. So, and then if we go in between again, this, this wiggly waveform will be right in the center. I guess I could amplify that, right, to make it a little bit more noticeable, a little bit easier to see. It's, it looks really noisy, right? But that zero detect is going to uh, only care about pulse width. It doesn't care about the noise. So it only cares how much of this waveform is below that, say, that purple line. That purple line's right now is showing us where the zero is. So let me skim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just travel across this yellow waveform up here, and you'll see this yellow thing go up and down like this. Well, I guess I gotta go a little slower to let it catch up. So right there, it's almost right in the middle. And then as I come down into a valley of the waveform, that's negative again. And then as we climb up, it's gonna come back up in the middle and then towards the top. Okay, so that's where the feedback and our sine wave collided and went into this amplifier. The next one we're going to see is on the other side of the uh, zero detect. Okay. All right, guys. So something interesting. I I smelled something getting hot. I realized it was a load resistor. It's 79.7 C, and that's after being off for a couple minutes, which is 175.6 Fahrenheit for those other people that like Fahrenheit. <laughs> All right, so just to be fair, I'm showing the uh, transistors and inductors. They're kind of mounted together on the board, and they're at 30C, or 86F. So, yeah, just barely warm. Yeah, it's about 71.6 in my shop. Uh, that's Fahrenheit, Celsius, 22C uh, Celsius in the shop. So, uh, only about 8 degree rise. All right, guys, I had to move the signal over, and I had to be really careful. Uh, it's hard to do that and hit the scope at the same time, so we're back. And there's the output of the of the zero detect circuit. So, okay, let's, here, let me turn down the power again. And I've saved the image, so that's why the purple the and the green the output signals are still up. That's good, because now we can compare them to the zoomed version. And there's our pulse width. So depending on where the screen guy is along here, and you can see it right now, it's the bottom of our of our output. See the output right here, it's at the bottom, the green. We're zoomed in on our output. So we're uh, just getting very narrow duty cycle, which we should. Now, as as we scroll across, you're going to see the green and blue output, the one kilohertz waveform come up, and this pulse will get wider. See they're coming up, the pulse width is getting wider. And as it gets towards the top of this crest, right about there, see the green and purple at the top, see how wide the duty cycle is? 
and then that goes into our drive stage which is what I showed in the last video hey guys what do you think uh, that resistor got pretty hot 75 watts and a 200 watt resistor gets a pretty hot pretty fast I started smelling something and uh, and I was afraid it was the amplifier so I was gonna try to hurry and take that signal and turn the volume down I thought uh, man you know maybe I've had it on too long uh, but it runs without a heat sink and without any fan so I was a little surprised actually I was hoping I wasn't burning something up and then I realized it was my load resistor so hey guys did you like that was that interesting uh, follow that signal through the path uh, let me know what you think and what you'd like to see different or in addition or or whatever and I uh, appreciate you guys watching and give the uh, the video a thumbs up if you like it okay uh, appreciate you guys watching thanks to patrons and thanks for everybody watching the videos see you next time